guys, welcome back to another episode of Smoking Jazz Barbecue. We are at a special supermarket that we getting some minor stuff for our Thanksgiving. But today we're going to be doing something special. We're going to be featuring somebody who I admire in this barbecue world that we live in. This is the guy who I think is the definition of what a barbecue guru is. If you look up barbecue guru in the dictionary, you will see his picture along with some of the other great ones. So. Um, this is the guy who I have the honor and the pleasure of doing a collaboration with. And we're going to be doing chicken pot pie. And this is the guy you want to check out. Without any further ado, I'm talking about none other than Meat Cranium, formerly known as Meathead. So, guys, check out his channel right there. You make sure you go check him out, guys. He's got some great videos. Tells you exactly what to do. Helps you upgrade your grills and help you make a decision on whether to buy it or not because he does a lot of barbecue reviews. So definitely go check out his channel, like it says, right there on the top. And stay tuned for the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Smoking Jazz Barbecue. If you are brand new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell bell that way you stay updated on all the latest content that i put out so let's get started we're doing a collaboration with meat cranium and we're going to be doing chicken pot pie oh man that's going to be some good stuff guys so let's prep our weber kettle so i'm using a barbecue vortex to add our kingsford charcoal in and guys if you don't have a barbecue vortex you can always use the indirect cooking method which means you can cook on the opposite side where the heat source is coming from guys in today's wood flavor we're going to be using some hickory and also some good old cherry wood yes sir this is going to be some good stuff guys so just lining them up nice and evenly so that way our wood chunks can catch that nice fire all right so let's put our grate back and as always guys i like to use weber's lightest cube for me this is the most simplest way of starting up my charcoal chimney and I'm just filling it out about one third of the way because I don't need a whole lot of charcoal to add to my uh, barbecue vortex. And I'm just using a mini torch to light it up. As you can see, it lit up really, really fast. There's no chemicals, it's just wax, guys. And I allowed the charcoal to char over, which takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the weather. But while that's charring up, guys, let's take a look at our ingredients for this chicken pot pie that we're doing. Oh yeah. And speaking of chicken guys, this is the preparation for the chicken the way you're going to be doing on the grill. Alright, so I'm using my all-purpose barbecue rubs here, but you can use your favorite barbecue rubs as always. Be sure to coat all your chicken strips nice and evenly. This will allow all the flavors to be maximized and give you the full flavor that you are looking for for these chicken strips. We're going to pat the rubs down because we will never want to rub our rubs in. And we're going to flip and repeat on the opposite side. And we're going to do the same thing. So again, we're going to apply a nice coating on all these strips. And we're going to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes so all the flavors can incorporate and infuse with each other. Meanwhile, we're going to be doing the preparation for our cornbread topping. Oh yeah, this is going to be some good stuff right here, guys. Oh man. So we're going to use two boxes of Jiffy cornbread mix and we're going to empty those contents into that bowl. And it's going to be simple as one, two, three, I promise you. So let's incorporate all our ingredients together. We're going to add one third cup of milk and then we're going to add two whole large eggs into this mixture right here. Then I'm going to add one tablespoon of melted butter into our mixture as well. And here comes the fun part. We're going to use our handheld mixer on the lowest setting just to make sure we don't splatter none of this stuff all over the counter. And we want to keep this on the drier side guys because this is going to be our cornbread top. Be sure to mix into a nice consistency guys because we want to make sure we incorporate all the ingredients together. And we're going to scrape the sides just to make sure we don't miss anything whatsoever. But we want to mix it till we get a nice thick consistency like so. Just like that guys. Yep. Now keep in mind the recipe will be down below in the description box. Meanwhile our charcoal has ashed over nicely. As you can see there's a nice ambient fire going on inside there. So we're going to pour this into our barbecue vortex. And guys, keep in mind, if you don't have a barbecue vortex, just use the indirect cooking method. It's going to be the same concept right here. So we're going to pour this into our barbecue vortex and we're going to spread the charcoal nice and evenly. That way it, all wood chunks can catch a nice ambient fire and it's going to give us that nice smoke that we're looking for. And we're going to close the lid and let it come up to temp. 
So we want to open the dampers all the way just to get rid of that bad white smoke that you see right there guys. And then we're going to use some canola oil cooking spray for two simple reasons. One is going to season our grill and then it's going to lubricate our grates for this chicken that we are about to put on. So time for some smoke flavor. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're going to line up our chicken all the way around the barbecue vortex. And again, if you don't have a barbecue vortex, just use the indirect cooking method, which is the same simple concept. We're going to close the lid and readjust our tempers. This will allow us to hit that 275 degrees target that we need to cook our chicken. In. And we're going to cook our chicken strip for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to flip it after 7 minutes. And as you can see right there guys, we have reached that target. So let's take a look at what they look like inside. Oh yeah! That's right. <laughs> They're looking great, guys. They're looking awesome. So let's give them a flip. Oh, yeah. This is exactly what we are looking for, guys. You see the char marks on each and every single one of them? Yes, sir. <laughs> As you can see, my dog is patiently waiting for one of those strips to fall off the grill. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to add our cast iron pan at this point so we can heat it up on top of the barbecue vortex. So let's close the lid and let it come up the temp. So after five minutes or so, our cast iron pan is now nice and hot. We're gonna add two tablespoons of melted butter. We're gonna let this melt nice and slow. Be sure to stir this around because we don't want our butter to burn. Yes, like so. And now we're gonna add a cup of bacon strip. Yes, sir, I said bacon strip. <laughs> you can use any kind of bacon that you like. It does not make a difference. I just had some regular bacon. And we're going to stir this to get to a nice golden brown consistency. At this point, we're going to add all our vegetables into that pan. I got one cup of onions that I have cut into one inch pieces. And I'm going to stir them around for a little bit. Next, we're going to add our carrots. We're going to cook our hard vegetables first because we want them to break down just a little bit, but not to a consistency where they are soft. We still want them to have a nice little texture when we bite into them later on. So stir them around to combine all flavors. Next, I'm going to take the chicken off the grill. We're going to let this rest for about 5 minutes or so and then cut them into 1 inch pieces and return them back into our pan later on down the line. Meanwhile, we're going to add the rest of our vegetables. So I got 1 cup of celery and along with 1 cup of string beans and that I'm going to add to our mixture. Also, I'm going to add 1 whole can of corn into our mixture as well. And guys, if you don't like corn at all, just leave it out. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to stir to combine all our vegetables together to infuse with the rest of those flavors. We're going to let this simmer for about 5 minutes or so, and we're going to stir it occasionally. Just to make sure we're not burning anything underneath those vegetables. We have come to the point of this cook that we need to add our seasons to flavor this up to another level. Alright guys, so let's season this up. I'm using 1 teaspoon of dry minced onions, along with 1 teaspoon of dry thyme leaves. And then I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of dry oregano leaves. And this is going to be some good stuff right here. One teaspoon of ground garlic. And then, just to add another level of flavor, one tablespoon of seasoning blend. Oh yeah. And finally, but not least, I'm going to add one and one half tablespoons of my own personal barbecue rub. Now, you can use your personal barbecue rub that you like, but I'm going to use mine. Stir in nice and thoroughly to combine all flavors together. And then we're going to add two cups of that chicken that we had chopped up into one inch pieces. And this is going to be another level of flavor. So this is going to be the base for our chicken pot pie. Now it's time to add our final layer of flavors. We're going to add our liquids. I'm using two cans of cream of chicken and I'm using one can at a time. But this is going to be our thickening agent for our chicken pot pie. We're going to add the second can of cream of chicken to combine all ingredients together. Let this cook for about a minute or two. And finally, we're going to add half a cup of chicken stock. However, this is going to be the unsalted version because we already have plenty of salt from that cream of chicken and our barbecue rubs. Let's stir all the ingredients together to combine and infuse all the flavors together. And the pro barbecue tip of the day, always use insulated gloves when you're dealing with any hot items such as that cast iron pan. Time to add our cornbread topping that we had set aside from when we made it earlier. Now we're going to make sure we're going to mix this up nice and thoroughly one more time right before we add it to our cast iron pan. Now I'm adding right down the middle because I'm going to spread this out nice and evenly. And just be careful not to have any of that hot chicken pot pie splashing. So be careful when you are doing this. So spread it out nice and slowly and evenly as much as you can. 
Now we don't want to cover the entire pan because we want this to have room so all that steam and the air can escape on the sides. So just leave about a half inch gap between the cornbread and the pot pie mix and make sure to smooth out the surface just to have it even big. So time for some smoke flavor part two. <laughs> So let's take it back to the Weber kettle. We're gonna use the indirect cooking method to smoke and bake our chicken pot pie with our cornbread topping. Oh man, there's gonna be some goodies right here, guys. So we're gonna smoke and bake this at 275 degrees for about an hour. Check on it each and every single 15 minutes. But after the first half an hour, we're gonna turn the pan to the opposite side. This is gonna allow an even cooking and even distribution of smoke and heat just to make sure we're gonna have this cooked nice and thoroughly. All right, just like so, guys. So due to the miracle of time, this is what the review is at the one hour of cooking. As you can see, we still maintain that 275 degrees target temperature, and this is what she looks like. Wow. Oh yeah. She is looking awesome, guys. Look at that, wow. But we're not done yet, guys. We're not done just yet. So we're gonna add our final layer of our flavor profile right here. And I'm just using some good old cheddar cheese. That's it. You can add as much cheddar cheese as you like or as little as you like. But this is gonna be our final step to cooking our chicken pot pie with our cornbread topping. So we're gonna cook this for about another 15 minutes. And through the miracle time, once again, this is what the reveal is going to look like right here. Wow. Man, oh man. <laughs> this is something you want to have during a cold winter's day. This is going to warm your soul up. I promise you that, guys. Just get a nice big piece of it, just like so. And let's get a close-up look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And this is the part that I've been waiting for all day. This is the taste test part, my favorite part on the entire cook. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But this is Pit Master's Privilege right here, according to Barbecue Pit Boys. And my facial expression says it all right there because I went back for seconds. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to give this two thumbs up. <laughs> guys thank you so much for watching this video from the bottom of my heart make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and hit that bell so that way you stay updated with all the latest content i put out and if you like this video make sure you hit that like button and share this with all your family and friends and until we meet again guys this is smoking jazz barbecue